Now that the manpower was secure, the process was underway. The work began with test bores, which were completed in July 1888. Hobson decided to design a tunneling shield and began tunneling nearly one third of a mile from the river bank. He excavated great openings on both sides of the St. Clair River starting in January 1889 and began shield tunneling on the U.S. side in July and on the Canadian side in September. Basically what they did was um, uh, on each approach they had two shields and they, they lowered the shield into that hole to the uh, level of where they wanted the, the tunnel to start and they built what they called a, a launch pad basically uh, in modern tunneling terminology which was just a, a large framework that these uh, hydraulic rams could push against. The shield is basically just a, a big steel drum uh, the one that was used on the tunnel was 21 feet in diameter and it had uh, 24 hydraulic rams and it had a bulkhead in it. I lined the tunnel with cast iron rings with the thought that the cast iron was much more durable and wouldn't move like brick would. And um, so they put a number of rings in place and then they would activate the hydraulic rams against the rings and that would force the shield forward into the, to the heading. The lead edge of the, of the shields were pretty well cut to a knife edge on, on this 21 foot um, diameter so that it would go into the soft clay quite easily and they could move ahead three or four feet and then they would retract the, 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 the uh, rams and insert another ring of the cast iron uh, tunnel lining. In the meantime, the, the fellows would be at the heading, literally digging out the, the um, clay with picks and shovels, loading it into small carts hauled by mules on a little uh, tramway. They would bring that out of the tunnel. Um, they had two cranes on each side. One would pick the, the bucket off of the tram cart, bring it halfway up. The other one would take it from there to the top uh, of the heading, and then they, um, they would load that, dump that onto flat cars, and they hauled it out the guys and they were not just hard working, I think they were uh, full of ingenuity too. Uh, at one point they, they took a carpenter's adze and kind of give it an extra little bend so they could slice the clay off rather than dig it all by shovel. They just found it just as easy to slice it off like you would maybe a cheese or something. You know, we're used to large uh, engineering projects uh, done through um, big, heavy moving equipment. They didn't have that. They, they had basically guys with uh, shovels and pickaxes and, and, uh, and beasts of burden, as it were, to, to move things out. 